speaking on behalf of the youth of the East Side. We are witnessing a rapid change in our community, and I am scared. Our people are being pushed out. The homies population is increasing. The violence is getting worse. Our rent is going up, and the land that was donated to our community was sold illegally to big developers behind closed doors. I am upset because you are prioritizing development without providing the community real resources to be sustainable. Our wages are increasing, so we can't afford the expensive food, coffee, beer, and housing you are bringing to our community. It seems like you are creating these spaces and incentives to attract outsiders with money instead of helping your own community. The Hay Street Bridge is a historic landmark on the east side, and it is a place that our people have been going to for years. People fundraised and fought to protect that bridge, and I need you to respect their effort. We want the land to be something that will benefit the community and the youth of the east side. Give us a skate park, not condos, a place where we can feel at home and not be judged or followed because of the stereotypes people have about us. I hope you take our needs into consideration. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Okay. Gerardo, Marin. Okay. Is Alex here? Okay. okay. We, we'll move on now to council comment. We'll start with Councilman Saldana. One more thing just a minute. I'm sorry? I know, Ms. Hinton, Ms. Hinton had, you had nine minutes. That's the maximum allowed. But so if a council member wants to recognize you, you can go ahead and speak. We'll start with Councilman Saldana. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. I'm going to yield to, uh, to Councilman Hall, who I'm sure might yield to Nettie. And, Councilman and, Hall. And thank you, Councilman. And uh, Nettie, uh, just a, a couple more minutes. Thank you so very much. The one thing that I wanted to make certain was on, on the table is the fact that when the city um, deeded the land so that it could be a part of the brewery, they also gave a licensing agreement so that the, that the city would allow tables, chairs, umbrellas to be uh, placed on the Hay Street Bridge and that people would be able to eat their food, drink their beer, the licensing agreement. When the federal government learned, and guess who told them? that this was a part of what the city had planned. The federal government told the city of San Antonio, should you commercialize the bridge in any way, be prepared to return the $2.9 million that we gave to restore the bridge. Make certain that you understand that's a part of your decision as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hinton. And so, well, thank, first of all, let me just say thank you to everybody that has come forth um, and spoken on this issue. Um, this is an issue that has been ongoing for many years. Um, we've seen documents and discussion dating as far back as 2002. And then we had another iteration in 2012. And so, um, and most of us on council have not been involved in, in any of those uh, decisions. And so, uh, but what we're trying to do here today is um, do our best to, number one, recognize that there have been wrongs that were done um, and decisions that, that were made that many of us on council now might not have made those same decisions. Uh, but we have a new council and a mayor um, who are interested in doing what we can uh, to right any wrong uh, that, that may have been done. And so I'm hoping, and I've heard a lot of comments back today that, that we have not listened and that we um, uh, have, have, have broken the, the trust. Uh, our goal today is to let you know that we are listening. And I think taking up this issue today uh, in the manner that we are taking it up uh, hopefully says in part that we, we are. Um, and that part of the aim today is to bridge and rebuild that trust and, and start anew and with, with a reset. But to do that, uh, we had to make tough decisions. And part of those tough decisions, number one, was to look at where are we right now and how can we move forward based on where we are. 
and from my understandings from, from our attorneys, uh, that there is a property owner that is not the city, and uh, that property owner has entitlements and rights to build. And so, at least for me coming in, uh, uh, trying to help solve the issue, I've got to start from that perspective, recognizing that there have been issues in the past, uh, but at the same time, I've got a uh, existing reality that I have to deal with in order to be able to resolve uh, the issue. And so, recognizing the fact that uh, there is a property owner that is not the city, um, I had to approach that property owner and see what we could do to even be at the table. So I, I want to first thank Mitch for being open to, to sitting at the table with me um, to at least look at the potential of the city doing something so that it could regain that property and, and re, uh, put that, that property ownership back in the city's hands. And so um, we had several discussions uh, there and we, where we are today was very different from where we started uh, because there was a lot of uh, back and forth. And so at the end of the day, what I was trying to do was come up with something that um, took us from where we are, uh, but also created the notion what I called value to value. Uh, I wanted to be able to, uh, to let council know that, well, first of all, we've got a piece of property that over time has been um, is in an area that has increased in values. And so we've got to look at that. We've got to look at the fact that, that his entitlements uh, were based on uh, rules that were different than what they are now. And so um, basically I was trying to see if I could lift those same uh, rules and structures that were in place at, at, back then into a new piece of property um, and looking particularly at the, at the value to value proposition based on appraisals. And so we got appraisals on both properties. Uh, we used the same appraiser uh, on both pro properties. And that appraiser was an independent appraiser and a certified appraiser um, apart from the city. And so uh, I feel confident that, that the value uh, and the appraisal, the valuations that were provided by that appraiser um, were accurate and uh, reflective of the, the true value of the, of the properties. Um, one was 1.6 and one, the other was 1.5. So the, the difference is, is, is slight there. So I understand um, the concerns. Uh, we, my understanding is that the original purchase price for that piece of property was $295,000. Um, those are not the values that are in that location today. And so um, I, in order to even start this whole process, I had to begin uh, with a property owner and figure out how we could at least come to the table, and, and we've done that. From there, it's been conversation after conversation. I, I, I tell folks that there's been six groups that I've had to work with in order to be able to be where we are today. Number one, the property owner. Number two, the Hay Street Restoration Group. Number three, Dignity Hill Neighborhood Association. Number four, the Denver Heights Neighborhood Association. Uh, number five, I've got to work with council to be able to, to get something that they could support. And number six, it's got to be something that the community uh, as a whole uh, can support. Uh, that's a lot of folks. That's a lot of stakeholders. That's a lot of interests. And not all of them are going to be the exact same thing. And so to come up with a resolution um, and a compromise requires just that, compromise. And I heard somebody say that when you work to, to develop a compromise, um, it's very difficult to, to have complete 100% consensus. I think uh, Liz said that. Um, and so I think it's clear, clear here today that we don't have 100% consensus. And there are very few is issues where we have 100% uh, consensus, particularly when uh, it's controversial. So our goal then is to do what we can to get the highest level of consistency that we can um, to solve an issue, and in this particular case, right or wrong. And I think we've gotten to a point today where, where that conversation uh, is happening and that resolution can happen as well. I wanna say thank you to the Hay Street Restoration Group, um, particularly to Nettie Hinton, uh, to Gary Houston, and uh, the late Doug Stedman. Um, you all, from the get-go, from 2002, um, this, was, this was your project, Nettie. You've, you've been certain to let us know that. Um, and so I appreciate all the effort that you've, you have given uh, to this issue and to your community to make sure that it stays at the, at the forefront. Um, and working with the Esperanza Group to, to help push um, 
and they've done a, a great job of that. Graciela, uh, Yanez, uh, Amy Castley, who uh, is a very good friend of mine and a close colleague of mine who is away in, uh, in New York right now um, in bereavement. And so I want to recognize uh, her, her work, and the value that I have in her as, a, as a, uh, another attorney um, who has dedicated her life and her, her mission in life to uh, lots of great causes for free. Uh, she, from my understanding, <clears throat> is doing this work and has been doing this work over these, you know, seven or eight years, um, pro bono. And so that says a lot about Amy, uh, says a lot about this cause that she stands for. And so I want to certainly recognize that today. And so to all those folks who are part of the restoration group, thank you for continuing to advocate, continuing to push, even when sometimes it doesn't seem like folks are listening. Um, I want to say uh, on behalf of myself and this council that we appreciate your advocacy and all those who, uh, who came to advocate today as well. To Dignity, uh, particularly to, to Liz and to Nicholas, uh, if he's still here, um, and all those folks that, that I personally met, and uh, I know Lori and Eric met, uh, and Andy as well, uh, we appreciate your advocacy. And um, we know that and of course, we know that there was a division within the group in years past, um, but the neighbor association had supported the project previously. And um, we're still looking at some sort of economic development on this, this piece of property. Uh, Digna Winnie has advocated for Ella Austin um, and doing something better uh, for Ella than where they are currently advocating or are currently located. Digna Winnie has advocated for affordable housing on this location uh, and affordable housing just in general. And so we want to say I appreciate that advocacy. And they've also um, been concerned that uh, an additional park two streets away from a larger park and um, funding that, that, that is short on the larger park um, could cause issues in, uh, with this particular location just in general. And so they are advocates for more money for parks. And uh, when we do have park space that we make sure that we uh, do what is right and utilize them and um, uh, provide those parks and those communities with, with the sufficient funding to be able to do that. So part of their hesitancy, and I want to recognize that today, was that another park um, may not necessarily get the attention uh, that, that those parks deserve. And so particularly when we have so many other parks that, uh, that have many needs. So I want to recognize Dignity and, and their advocacy and, and, and some of those issues that they cited as well. Uh, Ms. Green and uh, Aubrey Lewis from Denver Heights, thank you all for being open to, to meeting uh, so many times as well. We did take into consideration your number one issue, which we heard up front, which was the height uh, and limiting to, to, to five stories. And so um, that from our early on discussions was uh, front, and, front and center. And so hopefully um, that helps on that particular issue. But I also want to do, wanted to also say thank you, Denver Heights, uh, Aubrey, and his team, his leadership team, and Maria, for advocating again for Ella. And I'm hoping uh, Councilwoman uh, Andrew Sullivan is, is in the uh, chambers today, um, that there have been several, and I will add my name to this list, that Ella Austin is in a city facility that um, needs a lot of work. And so uh, if we can't do the work there at that location, let's, let's, let's support Ella Austin somewhere. Um, and, and I appreciate Denver Heights. I appreciate Dignity advocating for, for Ella Austin and a location for Ella Austin, um, perhaps, if, if not on this area, uh, not, not on the uh, exchange property, but somewhere else. And they also advocated for SAGE. They also advocated for the NAACP. So I talked a little bit about the swap, and so that's part of the, the issue that we um, had to first cross the hurdle to, to get to where we are. And so that's not a perfect solution, um, but it's the solution that's on the table and the solution that, that gets, got us to the table and uh, the solution that will at least begin the discussion of, of, uh, from, from the property being back in the city's hands. So then the, the second issue has been what do we do with the property uh, 803 and 815 uh, once it's back in the city's hands. And um, there was again a wide variety of perspectives. We had one side uh, that wanted to remain op open to economic development, affordable housing, structures, that kind of thing. We had the other side uh, that wants 
solely dedicated to a park. Uh, the original language that we put in the ordinance um, was kind of right in the middle. Uh, but we heard loud and clear that that was not sufficient. And so uh, I will be making a motion here in a second that uh, goes to that extreme of placing the land uh, back into a public park in the city's hands, number one, but as a, as a designated public park. And whatever community discussions happen from there, uh, start from that basis of a public park. And I'll tell you two reasons for, for doing that. And again, going from a middle position to one that, that recognizes and designates as a park. Number one, and I appreciate the mayor for, for reminding uh, me of this and then the entire council for also reminding, is that um, we have a history here and part of that history has been litigation. And we wanna do whatever we can to just stop the fight and, um, and get as close as we can to, to staying out of the courts and resolving the issue uh, once and for all. And so the best way that we can do that and looking at what, what has been the issue, um, it's number one, ownership, which I hope we're solving today. But the second issue is a park. And uh, if we have something other than a park and discussion that might lead to something other than a park, then we open ourselves to, up to, to further battles, further division within the community. And so that position would not solve this issue. And so uh, the language that we, we, we're gonna come up with here in a second will be solving that issue and getting to uh, the designation of a park and then recognizing all the history and so forth that goes along with it. The second piece of that, uh, of, of why we're going to the, to the side of designating this uh, as a park, is to recognize, and Graciela has, has made this point, and I appreciate that, uh, recognize the history that's here, um, the hard work uh, that has been, been on this piece of property by Nettie and um, uh, Mr. Stedman and, and uh, Gary and, and others, um, and all the history that has happened before. <clears throat> and we can't neglect that and you know, put aside that history. And so, uh, where we start from here today um, should be a recognition of that history. And a couple of things that Graciela sent me uh, that I would like to set or, or, or submit into the record tell part of that history. Um, number one, in 2006, and this is when I was on council the first time around, and this is by a, a grant application by Tom Windorf, who uh, has been long since gone from city of San Antonio, um, and oversaw, uh, what was the name of the division that, TCI Public Works. And so Public Works is no longer Public Works, it's now TCI. But this uh, grant application was pretty detailed um, about the, converse, the community conversations that happened and pretty detailed about a park and detailed about what should go into that park and recognition of the depot and, and folks that work there and so forth. And even though we didn't get this grant, it still is a recognition of, of work that was done and community work that was done um, and, and advocacy that was done back then. And so um, part of moving today to, to do a park instead of something right in the middle recognizes this. Um, she also gave me the, the 2007 um, ordinance from, from council that recognizes the, the donation of land from, from the Budco company. And I would like to, I know it's part of the record, but I'm gonna submit that as part of the record as well. And then she gave me uh, some information about um, the history of the bridge and some of the history of the work that's been done, uh, written by Doug Stedman, who is, who's passed away. And so uh, all of this is important history. Uh, we talk a lot about um, history here on this council and how, it is, how important it is to, to continue to recognize that and value that. And I'd like to do that today. And hopefully our decision but today, although not a perfect one on, on, on many different levels, I do think it resolves and recognizes uh, a lot that should be uh, recognized today. And so then my, my final statement is, I just wanna say thank you to, to Mayor and Council for entrusting me, number one, in, just to sit in this position uh, for the time that I have. And, um, and then number two, to, to take on this particular issue. I've tried to solve lots of controversial issues during my five months on Council. And this is one of those that, uh, frankly, I saw and wanted to be able to, to, to help resolve. And particularly, 
focus in on the next council member uh, to make sure that that council member has, has the, um, I guess, smoothest opportunity without controversy to, as, as a starting point. And uh, my goal uh, during this, this time period has been to resolve as many of those controversial issues that have been out there outstanding for a lot of years. There have been several of them. Um, and to get those resolved so that when she starts uh, next Thursday, um, that she has the best opportunity for success and non-controversy as possible. So thank you, Mayor Council, for, for all of that. And Eric and Andy, um, you guys have been there every step of the way, and I appreciate that. Uh, with, when the city manager shows up to a meeting and when the uh, city attorney shows up to a meeting, that means something. And that means that they're invested, they're interested, uh, they're working hard to, to, to solve an issue with the community, um, but they're also making sure that, that their resolution is in line with, with council and the mayor um, and all those issues that they're supporting. And so I want to thank Eric and, and Andy for, for all of that. And then I, uh, Councilwoman Gonzalez has, has, has often said, particularly on this particular issue, that there, there is no hero um, in today's decision um, because it's, it's, it's been a, it's a constant of, of issues. Um, and so, and I appreciate that, that, that point and that perspective. Um, but if there was a hero, um, the one person that I would like to recognize and say thank you to uh, is Lori. Uh, Lori has been um, a strong advocate, a strong hard worker on this particular issue. Uh, we've not always been on the same side, but we figured out how to get on the same side. Um, I never really had the real opportunity to work really closely to, to Lori before. Um, this has been that opportunity, and um, I've, been, I've enjoyed working with you, Laura. You've, I respect you. I respect your ethic. Um, we've been texting, emailing, you know, sometimes 11.30 at night. I remember one time we were, we were emailing and texting, uh, 11.30, 12 o'clock at night, and I didn't realize all her other stuff, but, but she was presenting on the scooters the very next day and uh, dealing with all those, those issues uh, the very next day. Um, but that just shows how hard our staff works to get things done, um, to, to, to address the issues uh, that council raises. And so I, certainly I, I, want, I want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done on, on this particular issue and all the support that you've given me and council on, on this issue. Uh, something I said about Eric and others way back when is that um, the good folks get the hard issues. And this was a hard issue, and you've had so, some others. Uh, but I certainly know that this was a, was a hard issue, and I think you've got it uh, because, number one, you had experience with it, but number two, uh, you're a hard worker, and uh, you were going to help me and help council figure out how to get, that, get this done. And so I want to say thank you for that. Let me just say one larger comment about affordable housing, and, and I should have said it earlier, but I'm going to say it now. Um, when I was interviewed for this position and just coming in, there were kind of three issues that really stood out. Um, scooters were at the top of the list, uh, the equity budget and bonds and so forth that, that this council has prioritized and this mayor has prioritized. Uh, but the third issue, and really it was the first one, um, has been affordable housing. And so that for every council has a theme and things that they're focused in on. And I will tell the community that from, my, from an outsider coming in, uh, the, the number one issue that this council has been focusing on has been affordable housing. It's not been, been without its hiccups, and, it's, and this council is trying to solve those hiccups. Um, but what I, th what, what I'm, what I want to say to you all is that affordable housing is, is the key issue for this, uh, this council, and, it's, and it will continue to, to be so. So I don't want anything dealing with this vote uh, to downgrade that. Um, we had a piece of property, have a piece of property that's been dedicated to affordable housing. We're, only, we're taking half of that to resolve a bigger issue, a big issue. Um, the other half is still going to be dedicated to affordable housing, either on the property itself or the proceeds going uh, to affordable housing. But at the same time, I want to also recognize the fact that affordable housing is a huge issue here in San Antonio. And... Um, I looked at everything that we're doing. Uh, Lori sent me a list of everything that we're doing, affordable housing in District 2. There are hundreds, uh, I want to say thousands of units that have been built for affordable housing and are planned to be built for affordable housing in District 2. And that's just, a, just District 2. 
I'm sure there's the same numbers all across the city. So know that affordable housing is, is and will continue to be an issue for this council and solving all the uh, issues related to affordable housing. We're not going to solve affordable housing with a 1.7 piece, acre piece of property or a four acre piece of property. Um, and there are lots of other properties, as Liz has mentioned, that are open and available for affordable housing. And so there are opportunities that we can continue to push for affordable housing in District 2 and the Near East Side uh, of District 2. And I trust Jada and others in this council will look for every opportunity to, to continue to do that. What we're doing today, and we got lots of different issues that we're prioritizing, but in this one instance, we are prioritizing an issue that's been around for, for two decades. And um, we'll, keep, we'll continue to take on that affordable housing issue in other areas, but today's priority is to resolve that, that issue, right that wrong, and make sure that, um, that we rebuild and regain and restart that process of gaining the trust with our community and, and in particular District 2. So with that, Mayor, I'm gonna make a motion uh, based on the ordinance that has been listed with the following change to section 2E. And so section 2E will now read, and I think they're gonna put it on the, uh, on the screen. The future use of 803 and 815 North Cherry will be as a public park dedicated to the historic Hay Street Bridge, which stands as significant reminder of 18th century wrought iron engineering of the railroad industry and of the San Antonios who worked on the railroads, many of whom were African American or Mexican American. Any improvements to the park will include at minimum drinking water, restroom facilities, trees and or shade structures, picnic areas, and information about the bridge. City staff and the District 2 City Council office will seek input from community partners to include residents of Hay Street Bridge to include, this is the word a little bit wrong, but I'm gonna correct it here. To include the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group, Dignity Neighborhood, and other stakeholders and surrounding neighborhoods to develop the park's design, which will consider how to protect the view of the bridge and from the bridge as it relates to 803 and 815 North Cherry. A funding plan for both capital and operations will be, will be developed and identified on or before December 31st, 2019. The process will be done in accordance with the city's public participation principles. And so, Mayor, that's my motion. Okay, there's a motion and a second for approval of item 23 uh, as amended uh, by Councilman Hall. Councilman Saldana. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, this is my, my last official council meeting that we're actually conducting business in. And, um, there was a part of me that was hoping that it was going to be all happiness, hugs, and handshakes, um, but I was wrong. So I, I, I recognize that we're past the lunch hour, so I, I want to make sure that folks know that um, because this is my last council meeting, I, I'm not trying to be long-winded, but I am trying to just make sure that you all understand uh, what's in, in my head as a policymaker uh, standing a little bit on the outside of District, True, uh, District 2 trying to make a decision uh, for the entire uh, um, district, areas impacted residents, people who are coming in here from areas that are not specifically uh, the east side. And, and that's how I come at this because I, I don't represent the area, but uh, obviously this is uh, a stake in the ground that represents more than just uh, the east side. This is an iconic bridge that is recognized by, whether you, whether you look at a news station or you watch a commercial, everybody's eyes seem to be pinned on the Hay Street Bridge, and, and it's for good reason. But before I make those comments, uh, I think it's important for us to recognize that we are only here talking about this bridge uh, because there are people with power, and the question of power has come up a lot. Who has power? Who gets to deal the, the, the decisions within the city? And the only reason we're, tr we're making a decision on this, that we're talking about Hay Street Bridge, is because of, uh, of the, the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group uh, to be led by, by Nettie Hinton and, of course, the folks uh, from, from, whether it's Graciela, Amy Castley, Yaneth Flores, these are folks who have been leading efforts of people to talk about this issue, and they've made headlines because this has touched a nerve 
uh, in the entire city. And let me also recognize that this is mostly a group of, of women who have been you know, pounding the streets, drumming the, the narrative and the beat uh, that we should care about Hay Street Bridge and it should be something that everybody weighs in on. Uh, and that's why I'm glad I have the opportunity to weigh in as a council representative in District 4 on the southwest side talking about an issue on the east side uh, with the permission of our you know, uh, council person in District 2 who has been very open uh, unlike you know other situations where sometimes it's hey this is my council district I take the lead you follow my lead on this uh, you know Councilman Hall has been much to the contrary uh, open to our input and our feedback feedback on this and I want to just say that when you come to City Hall as a council representative you don't get to come in with a clean slate you have to come into City Hall with all of the baggage and the bad decisions that this institution has made. And if you were to average and add up all of the decisions made about and to the east side, they would come up short with respect to a question that has come up here, which is this question of justice. Has proper justice been delivered to District 2? Has, has the equality of, of resources and attention and time been paid its due to the east side? And it has not. It comes up short. We as a city council have to come into this institution, and it's not just the east side, but we have to come into this institution where we know there's this idea that you can't fight City Hall. And I don't know a better example of of what this restoration group has done for the last seven years, going through lawsuit and lawsuit and press conference and rally, uh, what they've done but fight City Hall at every step of the turn. And the question is, uh, can you fight City Hall? And it comes down to who has power. And again, we're only here because the folks that are most powerful, that have raised voices, that have organized and have got community members together, have raised the consciousness of, of this city council. And and look, here's the question. There's two in my head on this issue and on this vote. Does this deal, land swap included, correct an injustice that was done in 2012? And the question of, of applying one injustice to clean up another injustice doesn't make sense in my head, and it shouldn't in yours either. So here's the question about trust that keeps coming back because I know that the East Side has struggled with this and trust is a fragile thing, it's easy to lose and it's incredibly hard to gain back. We will vote on this today and we will not get the community's trust back. That takes much more time than the vote that we're gonna, ha that we're gonna take here today. It, it, it really sort of, you know, hurts me to say this, but this is, this is part of my atonement for a decision that I was part of. I, I, I have atonement to pay for my name being on a decision in 2012 that really started this whole thing. And it, nobody else on the council can lay blame at their feet as much as, as I can, because I'm the only one still here uh, on the city council whose name is on the decision in 2012 to go into this deal. And the idea back then, I'm gonna own it because it was wrong, was that we wanted to believe that, that the east side needed more investment. And the, the proper way to do that was to try to get some folks to invest in the east side. And I know that sometimes you get exactly what you ask for. And, and we've seen the development and we've seen how quickly the speed and the velocity of that has impacted people to the point uh, that they're coming here and telling us that my neighborhood is no longer looking the way it did uh, because I've grown up here for 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years, and something is happening and changing. And, and I have to ask forgiveness for, for not seeing past you know, the several years of development that, that would occur here. So I want to... I want to point something out that Asiko Gomez pointed out, and you're, you're wise beyond your years, Asiko. I don't know how old you are, uh, but you said you can't give something back that was ours to begin with, and we're trying to clean up a mess that is not going to be truly justice in, in anyone's mind. Uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to take back this land that was originally the cities of San Antonio's. We made a mistake in giving it away to begin with, but now we're stuck in this position where we've got to chew on and swallow this bitter pill that the person who owns it 
is, is not, in my eyes, the, the kind of actor that I would ever consider to be, you know, uh, good faith in, in his willingness to want to see the best for the East Side community. Uh, that's not who we're dealing with here. Uh, and, and that person owns the land. And so, again, does the land swap correct the injustice? And I don't think it does. But the second question I have is, does it at the very least achieve the goals of the folks who've been fighting the longest for this? And the goal was, from what I heard, and, I, and I'm almost tempted to call up members of the restoration group, but I won't do that because you don't need to be on record here. I think this is, the goal that I heard was we want this land to be open and public and we want the view shed protected. And the language that, that Art has, our Councilman Hall has laid out is tighter than the language that you read uh, a week ago. This is not a discussion of whether this is going to be a park and whether this is gonna be left up to the community. He clearly laid that out. There's no more debate. This is going to be public open land. This is going to be public open land. And, and, and that's what we were trying to achieve here. I, I you know, there's this popular notion uh, about the restoration group and the people behind it that you're never gonna make them happy. Um, and that's, that's not our goal. Uh, we, don't, we don't wanna make you happy because I would be disappointed if the activists and the voices and the folks who come up here with, with signs who find a reason to come to fight City Hall, I would be dissatisfied if you were happy uh, because you make this process as difficult and as tension filled and as uh, 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 hurtful as it might be to us to have to hear about how we're disingenuous, we need to hear those things. So I don't need you to be satisfied. I need you to have an urgency to continue to work. I need you to have an urgency to continue to fight, especially because I'm on my way out. Continue to fight <laughs> the rest of, of this council and continue to fight City Hall. But remember, we're here because of you. Uh, we're here because you decided that this was an issue worth fighting for and Nettie Hinton's and the legacies of, of, of this bridge, of, of Mr. Stedman's and, and Mr. Houston's legacy is not gonna fall on, on deaf ears here. We're trying our best to uh, clean up this mess. It won't be clean. We won't get everybody's trust back, but that's not the point of this vote. Um, and I know and I recognize that people are hurting, um, that there is this hurt in the community and, and we feel it and we see it in the, the voices and the eyes of these uh, young people who, who come up here. So let me just finally end up uh, with this, which is that uh, the best advice that I was given about uh, coming into elected office, uh, Asika, remember this, because you'll, be you'll be up here soon, is that the most comfortable pillow you can sleep on at night is a clean conscience. And I have been trying to sleep on that decision in 2012, but the more and more that I know about it, the more and more that I'm educated about it, it makes it so hard to, to, to sleep on that decision. So I ask forgiveness for being part of that. And, and we're trying in some way to, to regain uh, the trust that we have lost. And it takes twice as long to rebuild bridges that you've burned, but we're gonna try to do it you know, piece by piece here. Um, and so, you know, with that, um, thank you to Nettie. Uh, you've been a real shining light, lighthouse on the east side. It's, it's gonna be a, a real, you know, a gap in my life to not see you as often from this point, but I know I'm gonna see you in the community, whether it's at the friendly spot or fighting your next fight. Uh, and, and with that, Mayor, I know that there's a lot of folks who wanna weigh in on this, but again, let me pay my respects to uh, the women who have led this organization, who have uh, led the movement of people and, and, and are trying to give power back to the same people. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Saldana. Councilman Polias. Thank you very much. Um, the, the first thing I want to point out is uh, Art Hall was brought on as the council member for District 2. And Art, you would have done a perfectly satisfactory job if you would have been a caretaker of that seat and just made sure that things didn't fall between the cracks. Instead, uh, you decided to not be the caretaker uh, and you undertook what is, a, what is clearly a very difficult and prickly issue, um, and that's bold. Uh, and I think you've gone above and beyond what was expected of you. Um, I know a lot of folks who I, who I admire very much, who I think would have done an, a satisfactory job, a good enough job, uh, but to you, 
uh, good enough wasn't good enough, and that's why I'm so happy that we chose you uh, to be on the seat. Uh, I, I will tell you uh, that I think the reason that we finally reached a resolution on this is because, uh, Art, you're also um, an accomplished and admirable mediator. Um, as evidenced by the fact that Art brought together all the stakeholders and frequently touched base with the stakeholders and really had a good feel for what everybody wanted and what everybody needed, which are oftentimes two different things, right? Um, and the one thing that um, it comes to mind is watching you go through this process, Art, is, a, is an old saying that, that was taught to me by a very old lawyer that said, um, you know, to accomplish the perfect, uh, a little imperfection helps, right? And in this case, this is not perfect, right? Um, and, you know, we all know that true leadership is, uh, you know, leadership that recognizes that perfection oftentimes impedes the good, right? And in this instance, I look at, I look at this resolution and from every single angle, it's good. Um, but for me, the most important reason that it's good is it because it finally resolves and settles a dispute. Um, that in and of itself is good. Um, and that, that wasn't easy, Art, and I know how much hair you've lost over this. Uh, uh, and, um, and, I, and I think that, you know, it, unfortunately when the history books are written, you know, the words uh, Art Hall did it uh, may not be written in that history book, but, but you did it. Art, and, I, and I do think that you deserve uh, a plaque on this bridge, if, if, uh, if that's okay. Um, I, I do want to, you know, Graciela, I, I know that you're, you're here and, and you've spoken to us a lot. Can I ask you some questions? Come on up. So, I, I, and I just, I, I haven't been really involved in this and you and I haven't had a chance to talk about it, but I'm assuming um, I'm correct when I say that you, you speak for the Hayes Bridge Restoration Group. I'm part of the Hay Street Bridge Restoration Group and the Hay Street Bridge Community Coalition. Okay, all right. Um, and as one of the plaintiffs in the Hay Street Restoration Group versus City of San Antonio lawsuit, I, you know, I went through and I looked at the petition, and what y'all were asking for in that was that we honor the original um, spirit of the memorandum, which is to make this a park. Uh, accessible to the public. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, was, am I yes. right? Okay, so that being said, I think you heard today a motion on the floor and a second to make this a park accessible to everybody in San Antonio. And um, I think that satisfies exactly what you were asking. Am, am I right in assuming that as well? We were asking for that and we also, what was not part of the MOU, but had been part of the conversations uh, were, were also the saving of the view of the bridge um, because anything that's more than six feet off the ground is going to cover the view. I, right, and so. I get it. And I'm with you on that. So just to make sure you and I are on the same page, for the purposes of the lawsuit, you were asking for the spirit of the memorandum, which is a park, to be honored, and today we're doing that. Now, and, and I just want to make sure you and I are on the same page before I vote yes on this. That's exactly what we're doing today, right? As of uh, 9.30 this morning when we got right. that piece of paper, yes. And that pretty much resolves the dispute between us, right? As it relates to the, the park. park, not right. as it relates to all the other issues that, you know, the community raised. Right, right. And, and I get that. And that's not the part that's in the lawsuit, though, right? All the other issues are uh, other issues, right? I think we're never going to be satisfied if, and that was my, my last right. part of, you know, re resolve that the city council members don't continue to just have these, you know, other sort of deals and always continue to uh, make the wealthy wealthier, right? <laughs> I, I get it. But none of that was in the petition. The only thing in the petition was let's keep this a park, right? Correct. Okay. Well, so having done that, is, do you have any reason to believe that we should continue this lawsuit? We um, have said we're not going to, unless something changes, <laughs> and we, you know, who knows what's going to happen with a new council person. Right. Um, that's why we wanted the language to be more direct and clear, because in 2007 we thought it was clear right. and it didn't, you know, take place. So we feel that the language is a little stronger. 
and we just hope and honor for those of the council members that are still with us in the next year or so, you know, continue not only just to, you know, make it a part, but then figure out ways to find funding, uh, which we didn't incorporate. We were, you know, also going to raise money, but again, Doug Stedman, who was one of the leaders in raising yes, money, is gone, right? Yes, ma'am. And Nettie is uh, not, uh, you know, running around up and down that bridge like she used to. Uh, people. <laughs> But she, yeah, and, she and, pe and people want to help raise money, but we also want that the city continue to be a partner in this very much, you know, community spirit. Because again, everybody that did all this work has done it for free. And I, and I appreciate that. And, and that's, that's really admirable. And so before I move on to the next topic, I just want to make sure we're in agreement. This pretty much resolves the dispute that is pending in court, right? I'm not a lawyer, but I think uh, we, we, if it becomes a pu public park, uh, we shouldn't be going, be going back uh, to challenge the contempt. I agree. Case. Thank you so much. Okay. Can we also agree also that Art did a lot of good work here and that he really does deserve our uh, gratitude? I like Art. I'm not sure that we're happy about the process because I think by the time we were okay. invited to, the, the, to participate in the conversation, 90%, 95% had already been resolved with Mitch Meyer and, right. not, and we think, again, Look at it from the perspective of the community, right? We won the lawsuit in 2014. We won again with the Texas Supreme Court on March 15th. And on March 15th, a lot of you as council members are saying, okay, let's figure something out. And then before you knew it, the resolution, the, the, the solution was to take care of Mitch Meyer. Reading the ordinance is insulting. That's why when my, I spoke, it was to, to kind of tell the real history because again, that ordinance is all about taking care of Mitch Meyer and so Eugene Seymour. So you and I just spent a few minutes talking about how we've resolved the dispute and how we're getting very, very close to exactly what it is you guys want, but yet you still feel insulted I by resolving I want one day, it. I mean, and I think uh, Councilman Saldana said it, you know, the city breached the contract. And right. I wish that language was in there, right? And I said that. And because you don't do that, it makes people crazy. Right? Sure. Okay. It, it, it dishonors and, you know, just, it, it, you just continue to tell a lie, right? right? And I did ask for language also because the Office of Historic Preservation has a history of the Hay Street Bridge and it's not all there. And again, my timeline, you can use it and that'll tell the real story and maybe you can incorporate that because the Office of Historic Preservation, history, you know, somebody should right. tell the truth. Thank you. Well, listen, I, I, I do want to tell you, I really admire the engagement. I, I think you've changed a lot of hearts and minds up here. Um, when I first came on council, to be honest with you, I really didn't care. Uh, it's not in my district, it's not my bridge, nobody in my constituents have ever talked to me about Hay Street Bridge, uh, but considering the work that he's done and the heavy lifting um, and just, again, resolving the dispute, that's what I cared about the most and to see all of you come together and finally, you know, uh, accepting a compromise that is admittedly imperfect uh, I think really helps the community begin healing. And so to me, that's just my way of saying thanks, Graciela. I appreciate your hard work. Well, and again, we want to have you all recognize that Woodlawn Lake doesn't belong to District 7, Hemisphere Park doesn't belong to District 1, Harbor Burger Park doesn't belong just to the North Siders. All of these are public lands paid for by the community. Mm -hmm. So we want you all to accept all of these in, in all parts of the city because we travel and we have families all over the city. Right. Okay. So thank you, Graciela, for your hard work. Um, <laughs> lastly, I know, I know I'm standing in the way of lunch, and so I, I do want to tell you, the other thing that I admired a lot was seeing all those kids here. Um, I think that was really powerful. Um, and I, I, was, I was so impressed with, uh, you know, how articulate they are. I've got a 13-year-old, uh, and I'm going to go home and tell him about, you know, how he really needs to pick up his game. Uh, and uh, because I, I, you know, really how amazing it is that we're teaching these kids, um, you know, the power of public engagement. And, and I want to thank whoever brought them. Uh, I, I will tell you, though, that we're getting emails and word from parents who had no idea that their kids were going to be brought down here to hold protest signs, especially protest signs with some obscenities on them. And... Uh, those, if we did bring other people's children um, to do what their parents didn't think they were gonna do, um, Yaneth, you used the right word, sinvergüenza, and somebody, somebody really needs to be a little more honest with parents, assuming that's true. If it's not true, well then don't worry about it. Um, thanks, Mayor.
Thank you, Councilman Plies. Councilman Trevino. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. And, um, you know, I, I too just want to echo a lot of the sentiments that have already been said. And first, I'll just simply start off by thanking Councilman Hall. Um, this, this is a difficult uh, subject. And, um, you know, I wasn't, wasn't quite there, and he, and he heard me out. And I, I just want to thank him for alleviating a lot of my concerns. Um, he was patient, and uh, I especially appreciate the part of acknowledging the affordable housing component, um, which is so, so important for our community. And speaking of our community, uh, you know, I think what we saw today was folks coming up to, to ask us to recognize and respect not just them, but the values that they bring. This is about our shared values as a city and how we can grow together, how we can heal, and, and hopefully uh, find this as an opportunity, as an opportunity to, to help shape better policy in the future, better engagement. Um, you know, the entire time I was listening to the community, I was thinking about uh, the last couple of weeks have been um, very, very unique for me. Um, you know, I, I saw Nettie Hinton, it seemed like, for an entire week in a row, every single day. It's true, right? And then I found myself uh, sitting at a, at a memorial for Mark Richter, and you came in and you sat right next to me. And the first thing I thought was, my God, this lady, I mean, she really cares about this community. And a lot of the things that were said about Mark Richter, and that I said as well, was about what he values, how much he cared about the community. And that really meant so much more knowing that there was people like you in the audience, because it's, it wasn't falling on deaf ears. It was, it was how so many good people surround you how many people uh, may someday be in a place like that, listening about who you were. Made me think a lot. And I think that's what's being expressed today. And I hope we can emphasize our values as a community, as a city council, as we heard a lot of the kids express you are respected, you are heard, and we do acknowledge your values. Um, so I want to thank you, Penny. I mean, I really enjoy seeing you. I, I run into you, whether it's a symphony event, an arts event, a memorial like that, or just simply crossing the street. Um, it's always a pleasure to see you. And so as it relates to this particular vote today, and I appreciate that we, we included language about a park. And I think what I heard Graciela pointing out was that, of course, there's all these other issues. Again, I would put that in, in the category of our value. The fact is, it's not just a park. It's what it's adjacent to, the history that it brings, where it's actually located, and so what's really important is how we get there, okay? Because this is just one step of that process, and we, we are acknowledging that. I, I want to thank Councilman Hall for, uh, he's really worked hard to get that language in there. And I just want to say, I think that's exactly what we're saying today. And we recognize that there's a lot more work to do. Uh, I'll tell you, you'll, you'll have my commitment to, uh, to work on that, to make sure that we're, we're acknowledging this holistically. It's not just a park. It's about the bridge itself, about the history, about the community, and how we can use this as a great opportunity to demonstrate everyone coming together, righting a wrong, acknowledging that, that you know, sometimes city council gets it wrong. And sometimes we're going to find ways to try to make it right. 
Is everybody going to be happy? Probably not. But we can at least acknowledge the values, our community values. We can at least acknowledge that we're all trying to improve our community in one way or another. So thank you, Councilman Hall. Uh, thank you to our city manager, Eric Walsh, Andy Segovia, and, and yes, Lori Houston, uh, for all your hard work. And I can tell you that, you know, I, as someone who works day in, day out, um, as a, as a partner, uh, Lori Houston is, is, is very committed to making sure that we're, we're tackling these issues head on. She provides, her and her staff have provided a lot of support for us as a council. Um, and a thank you to all the folks that came out today, the Restoration Group, the Esperanza Center, um, all the kids. Um, I look forward to supporting this and taking a step towards that healing and again, acknowledging and recognizing the pain, but allowing us to move forward today. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Trevino. Councilman Brockhouse. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. And, uh, you know, same thing with my colleague from District 4, uh, Ray and I, uh, departing at the same time. And I would not thought that my last vote would be in concert and in complete agreement with Ray. I thought it would be you, Clay. Uh, but no, I think Councilman Saldana hit the, hit the nail on the head here and really stole some of my notes here, uh, Council Member. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of piggyback on what Ray mentioned and just add a little bit into consensus. Uh, and when I was listening to, to a lot of folks talking, and I've been consistently uh, – you know, against this entire process from the beginning. I felt it should have been public land. It, the city made a series of mistakes, uh, and it never should have gotten to this point, and it should have ended a long, long time ago. Um, and, you know, I've stood on that ground pretty solid. Uh, I, Councilman Shaw, you've done everything you could to find a consensus, and I appreciate your hard work. So my comments are not a reflection of your lack of effort. Uh, it's just a reflection of another, which seems to be a controversial vote from a lame duck, you know, lame duck council. We've seen these types of things come through before that are rushed so that you can get a vote in before the next council seated so that they don't have to handle the controversy. Well, you ran for city council. Welcome to controversy. I mean, I think, a, I think the councilwoman elect is more than capable of handling uh, a, a much more part public participation on it. I've seen it. I voted for her to take the seat. Sorry, Councilman Shaw. Uh, and, you know, and I knew I like I think the council the member could have handled it uh, councilman elect could have done the work so the rush to me to make a lot of sense again another lame duck vote reminds me of barge deals and other things that are done uh, quickly so people can have less accountability next uh, when they're seated in the next council so I don't get it I don't understand it but at the end of the day it's hard to build consensus um, or hard, hard to find consensus when it's built on corruption um, so at the end of the day the neighborhood um, was victim of a corrupt decision insider deals, backroom deals, the former Mayor Hardberger with Eugene Seymour. I mean, you go right down the line, it's practically money laundering. You know, the, it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty simple, straightforward process what happened here. Somebody on the inside got taken care of and the neighborhood lost. I mean, that's so, and when the neighborhood lost, we're, we're sitting here act like we're doing something great for them when it should have just never happened in the first place. So the, the neighborhood is already at a net negative no matter what. Uh, and that's probably what upsets me the most. And maybe it's my last chance to talk on council. It's letting me go a little free wheel. But um, I, I'm just sorry for that, that that happened. Uh, and my vote will be a no today, period. Not in a reflection of not the hard work of Council Member Shaw. It's a no in a reflection that this was corrupt from the beginning. And it never should have happened. The city should have conceded a long time ago, never filed those lawsuits, never lost all the way up to the Supreme Court, and they should have honored what was best and right about what the community wanted. And what we are witnessing here today, I'll be honest with you, it's about a park, sure, and it's about the Hastery Bridge, but what you're seeing is a community clinging to its life. That's what you're seeing. And everything, it's, and now it's Denver Heights. Nobody said much when it was Dignity Hills, we got concerned a little bit when it was Mankey Park, and we're pumping tens of millions of dollars into gentrified areas, and we're now we're moving down into Denver Heights. Denver Heights is now screaming. I mean, at what point are we going to say we, we have to be very careful with the life that these people have built that is now going away in the name of 
of, of growth in the decade of downtown or whatever the heck we've called it over the last 10 years. People are losing their homes. And what you're seeing is all the way down to the young folks now saying it. And I, I, they're screaming, stop. You know, at some point we have to worry about um, the hypocrisy of saying you're for affordable housing. And then you turn around and you destroy neighborhoods by pumping tens of millions of dollars in development pockets. And here you go. So you can't have, you can't have it both ways. There's a middle ground. I get it. I don't think this is a middle ground. Mr. Meyer knew he bought into a litigated property. I'm sorry he did it, but he bought into a litigated property. Um, I don't know, Mr. Meyer ain't spoken to him, but if you didn't care enough to come talk to all the council members, I'll just tell it like it is. You bought into a litigated property, and now you are uh, getting a, a pretty sweetheart deal to move on down the street. Uh, maybe not the primary you want it to be, but it's a pretty good deal, the same deal that Eugene Seymour got because he's best friends with Phil Hardberger. I mean, this, you don't have to put two and two together. It's pretty simple. So I think at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm going to vote no in honor of what the, it should have been from the beginning. Thank you for the hard work. Thank you, Nettie Graciela and everybody. You've done the hard work. And I know uh, Councilwoman-elect uh, Sullivan would knock this out of the park just the same. So you get to come in a little on a clean ride. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be like a 10-1 on this one. But hey, what's new? What a way to close it out, right? So uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative. When I see the neighborhood coming up and the young folks and you're standing there, and Asiko, you and Councilmember Saldana is on point. You're, gonna, you know, you're probably going to be up here someday, so uh, fantastic words. I sent you a note because I thought that don't lose your passion. Here's a, a key point for you, Asiko, and any, anybody else who's still here. Don't lose your passion because you lose a vote. Don't do that. I've lost many of them up here, and I keep going every day, and I'll keep going straight up until 1.15 today or whenever it ends for me. It's blessed, so don't lose your passion when you lose a vote. Please, the community cannot stop that. It don't give up just because it doesn't go your way. If you, you've changed the dialogue a little bit. So just because you don't win a vote doesn't mean you didn't change a policy. It doesn't mean it's not a little better or it's a little different because you fought for it. So you fought, you may lose the vote overall, but you're going to get your park. Right? And I hope we protect the view shed and all the things that matter most. So you've done a heck of a job to get here. And I'm honored to, to throw my no vote down on this today for the hard work and, and the years you've done. Thank you for your time and your energy. And I really appreciate it. And those who didn't stay as well, thank you. Councilmember Shaw, I do appreciate what you're attempting to do here. It was good work. Uh, but in, and, you know, you've inherited a mess. You did the best you could. But uh, thank you for your hard work as well. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Brockhouse. Councilman Curry. Oh, yes, I saw you, Councilmember Shaw, didn't I? I'm sorry, Councilmember Hall. It, just, it sounds the exact same way to me. Councilman Courage. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to lend my congratulations to Councilman Hall for the hard work that he put in. And I know you did work with the stakeholders. You worked with the community. You listened to what they had to say. And I think that's very important. Uh, I, th I think what we saw earlier here today also was very special when so many young people uh, stood up uh, went to that microphone, spoke from their heart, uh, spoke on um, what they believed or what they felt. And, and I think that's always special, always important. But it was always dis also disheartening to me and concerning. Uh, and I think it's because I don't think many of those young people uh, were as well informed as they should be or could be. And I think that's a matter of not having the right kind of engagement that they should have had and that the entire community should have had. I was a teacher for 27 years, and I taught facts and I taught truth. Truth is prior decisions did not respect the best interest of the community, and that's how we got to where we were today on the bridge. But the reality is doing some of the things that people were advocating, like taking the land from the current landowner or tying, uh, tying it up in court, uh, you know, that would have cost you and I thousands, tens of thousands, maybe a million dollars or so to try and resolve that situation. And that would have taken a lot of money away from so many other important programs and services that we have in our community. And so I could not see becoming more engaged in those kinds of activities. The land swap proposed will save you and our community money. And the land being swapped, house city buildings 
Uh, it wasn't scheduled to become affordable housing, but now with this swap, there are great potentials that it may become affordable housing. And let me tell you, I'm a strong advocate for affordable housing. People who know me know that I am, and I'll continue to be, and will fight for affordable housing in all parts of our community. But today, this is about living up to an understanding that the community had about having a park at 803 Cherry, and that's what we're here to do today, and that's what I'm here to vote for, to right a wrong and to go ahead and understand and live up to the community's expectations. The concerns about gentrification and affordable housing and people's voices being heard and respected, those are real. And this council and this city government needs to meet those problems and live up to the community's expectations. It's unfortunate, though, that so many of the young people who have left won't hear that from us, did not know that that was our intention and that's what we want to do. And so I, I'm, I regret that they left thinking that this government was not for them or for the community. So I hope those of you who brought them out will help them understand what we're doing today and that we are going to build that park and that we do want to, to listen to them and that we do want affordable housing and that we don't want gentrification to take their homes. So remember to do the second part of the lesson after this is over. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Courage. Councilwoman Gonzalez. Uh, thank you. Lori, I have a few questions uh, regarding the presentation. Um, so uh, I, you met a, a presentation regarding um, some funding for the future use of, of 803 and 813 North Cherry? No, the presentation we talked about, the funding that's being appropriated today is the $600,000 that will be used to clean up 223 South Cherry. So we need about 250 for the environmental remediation and about 250 for the um, demolition of the structure, and then we have about 100000 for the replatting and survey and other expenses. So that's the funding that Council is appropriating. Uh, today in this today. agreement. Yeah. And so that the amendment that Councilman Hall made regarding um, the future of a public park, that funding is yet to be identified? So staff will be working on developing a funding plan to look at both the capital budget for what it would cost to build a park, as well as the operations and maintenance budget for what it would cost to operate and maintain the park. So one of the things that I know about District 2 similar to District 5 is that we are a very walkable community, at least the near west side, I, know, I mean, sorry, near east side, uh, but that our neighborhood was designed uh, on a grid network, so within a square mile is a park, a church, a school. Uh, and so I know there are already 49 parks in District 2, so this would make 50 parks in District 2. Um, and, you know, the re issue of funding and the maintenance of our parks is of great concern. And so I, I'm, I, I have some concerns about the, fund, the continued funding and operation of making this area a park. Uh, that has yet to be identified. Correct. And right now we are looking at funding sources to include using the inner city tours as a potential funding source. But that will be vetted and will return to city council. And uh, so I'm, I am familiar with the TERS, uh, the East Side TERS are TERS 11. Yes. Uh, and um, then who would be the person going before the TERS board for funding? Would it be the city? City would. Would. Um, okay. Uh, and I know that the TERS board has a sufficient funding mm -hmm. for parks improvement if they want to do that. But... Um, I think that's all to be determined. Yes. Um, okay, thank you, Lori. That's, I think, all the questions I have for you. And just sort of the question that always arises is, you know, the continued maintenance of funding of our existing parks. Because we do have many of them. Um, I know that 
District 1, I think, has the most parks because it includes downtown, and downtown originally had all of the city. Uh, I know that District 2 has 49 parks. District 5 has uh, 29 parks. So we have a, a very robust park department, and I think that there's wonderful things we can do, but I think that's always going to be a question is how we continue to maintain and operate our parks. Um, and that's the amendment that we have before us today that Councilman Hall presented uh, was parks. And then, which stands as a significant reminder of 18th century wrought iron engineering of the railroad industry and of San Antonians who worked on the railroad, many of whom were African American uh, or Mexican American. So uh, I, I think that this perhaps could be a very unique project um, that we could look forward to funding in some future date, but I, I think that's always going to be the question is how we find funding to do projects like this one. Um, and, and I also think it's important, just as we're going through the public engagement process, is that we are elected council members based on our community. And I know that I know best what's right for my community. I spend more time than any other person discussing issues among all my council district. Um, I spend more time than other people, uh, other council members in my own district. Uh, and I listen to my constituents and what they request of me. And that's why we always will defer to the council member, especially when it comes to something like a park or a small, um, acreage of land. In fact, I'm sorry, Lori, I'm going to call you up one more time just to clarify the uh, amount of land that we're talking about, which I think is 2.1 acres. The 803 and 815 North Cherry Street, the property that the city will be getting in return for the other property is 1.69 acres. The sign shop property is 3.92 acres, but we will be exchanging two acres of that with the property owner. So the, large, the footprint that we are talking about for a public space or a public park is about two acres. It's 1.69 acres. Yes. So fairly small, and uh, that, thank you, Lori. Uh, and that's really the, just the, some comments that I want to make regarding the space. It will be fairly small, uh, and therefore should be very inclusive of the people who live there. Um, and while I appreciate that my council member Saldana made his apology for why he voted the certain way. I feel confident that he did it at the urging of the council member who was there at the time, which I will assume, um, I think was Councilwoman Taylor. And she at that time had a vision for her community and what it should look like. And I'm sure she made those decisions with the input of the community. And so I'm making my decision today based on the recommendation from Councilman Hall who is a council member of the community, who knows best what's right for his community based on all of the input and all of the communication that he had with everybody to come up with a good decision. As council members, we take very seriously the responsibility of representing our community. And I believe very confidently that the members that are here today and all those that have served before have done so always with the best interest of what their community asked for. So um, I, I make no apologies for decisions I make on this council, especially if it has been the ask of the council member who lives there, because they are the elected member of their community. They represent their community. And I get very concerned when I hear other people who don't live in areas having the, the, um, the idea that they come before this council representing the areas when they do not. So I, am, um, I think this could be a very exciting project. I think, think it could be very unique. I'm familiar with the Hay Street Bridge project or rather the Hay Street Bridge, because uh, we do commute over it very often on bicycles. It's one of the routes we use to travel through the neighborhoods, um, connecting over and then ultimately to Salado Creek to ride along the creekways. Um, I think that the uh, example that um, Ms. Nettie Houston gave about using rail cars or having that kind of story could be very unique. And I would look forward to hearing what the community develops in this space. Uh, but I do know that Councilman Hall um, has done his very best to represent 
the desire and the interests of the neighborhood. And one thing that um, I believe, uh, whenever we have dis important decisions to make on this council, um, I pray. And when we were deciding uh, who should be our city manager, I prayed that we made a good decision and Councilman Hall uh, came before us. And when I very first decided that I wanted to be on this council, uh, I would pray for a good insight, and I got a call from Councilman Hall uh, about something completely unrelated. Um, but when we got together for lunch, and I tell him, he said, no, I wanted to talk to you about a separate issue. And I said, oh, I thought you were t calling to talk to me about the council. Uh, and he says, no, no, I, I was not. Um, but here I think there have been some very important decisions that have come before us on this council and have always trusted our hall to make a very wise decision. And so it is with that that I support uh, this motion before us today, the motion that suggests that the future land use of this property will be used as a public park dedicated to the historic Hay Street Bridge, which stands as a significant reminder of 18th century wrought iron engineering of the railroad industry and of San Antonians who worked on the railroads, many of whom were African American or Mexican American. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Gonzalez. Councilwoman Sandoval. Thank you, uh, Mayor, and uh, first we'll, I'll go through the thank yous. Thank you to everyone who uh, gave up some of their time to be here today and the people who have given up a lot of their time to work on, on this issue. As usual, Graciela, anything that's controversial, here you are. I don't know how you have the energy for it, but um, uh, thank you for, for all of your participation and hard work. And of course, uh, thank you to the city staff that's uh, been working on this. And of course, to Councilman Hall, I told you a few days ago, this was a big deal. And in the words of, of Joe Biden, I do think this is a BFD where, where we are uh, today. Um, so I have a, just some comments I wanna share. Uh, I also listened to just about all the testimony that we had from uh, the youngsters here today and the not so youngsters. And I was not there when the restoration group was formed, but thank you for forming it. Um, and I wasn't there when you made that agreement with the city, um, but it sounds like it was, uh, there was a lot of hope and promise in that. And I also wasn't here when uh, the other decision was made to transfer uh, that land. And I don't live in district two, but, what I have seen is the power of the bridge, of that restoration, the, the pride that it's brought not just to the people who live in that area or who have lived in that area, but to all of San Antonio. Um, I met a young woman who took a photograph of the, of the bridge and she really taught me how People come to San Antonio just to see that view. People come from all over San Antonio to enjoy that view. And that if something were to be built uh, blocking that view, we would lose, uh, we would lose that. Um, so, you know, I submitted with Councilman Shaw uh, a CCR uh, on protecting views. And part of the reason, it, it wasn't without controversy, but part of the reason I submitted that was because in this era of rapid growth that we're experiencing in our city, I was not ready for us to let go of some of those visual icons because I believe they are what define our, our city. And, if, um, and growth will happen, but if we let all of them go, then uh, we grow so much that we're no longer who we were before. And I, I do want us to hold on to, to some of that um, it'll come at a cost, I know it does, uh, in, in some way, there are trade-offs, right? Um, for, sometimes I've told stories about living in the Bay Area, but anyone who had a view of the Golden Gate Bridge from their apartment, you best be sure, they paid a lot more for that bridge. And that's, we might see some of that happen around that area, is um, the prices aren't gonna be any lower to, to rent in the, in the east side if you have a view of the historic bridge. And the truth is, the view is worth it, right? Um, so in terms of trading land, I, 
I put more value on the land that we're getting back than the land that we're trading. And that is why I'm going to be supporting today's motion, is I think it's so important to have that back, that I'm willing to do this trade. Uh, some of us on council, Councilman Saldana and I in the past, had turned to uh, Councilman Shaw uh, and to the previous city manager about finding a way to get this land back, and it didn't seem like it was going to be possible until you came on board, Councilman Hall, until the Supreme Court decided not to um, uh, hear that decision, and then there was some momentum to do something about it. So I'm going to seize on that momentum and vote for and, and support this, uh, this transaction. Um, now I do have uh, some questions about that transaction uh, that I'd like to discuss with staff. I want to make sure we're clear, and for the people who are watching, um, if we were to vote no, what would happen? Or what do you think would happen? If we were to vote no, we would not have a property exchange. Mm -hmm. And Mitch Meyer, who mm -hmm. is 803 North Cherry LLC, could start the permitting process to start construction. OK. Um, say he, he chooses not to, or he he doesn't build, how long can he hold that land for? He, he owns the property, okay, so he so can hold it forever. Okay. Um, is there another way, you know, for those of us who, who have said, hey, we shouldn't have ever given that land away mm -hmm. or sold that land, is there another way to bring that land back into uh, public ownership? I'm going to defer to our city attorney, Andy Segovia. Council. Uh, uh. The, uh, one of the other options that would, we would have to reacquire the land is to use our eminent domain if we're going to put it to a public use. However, we would have to pay the owner market value for the property if we were going to do that. Okay, so this is effectively do, doing that in a, not, not public, not eminent domain, it's effectively paying him market value in a sense. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so even, so even if we did eminent domain, which could be contested by the property owner, is that correct? Correct. That, that, it's a process that you start, uh, and that's the under the law you have to pay market value. Obviously, there's when cities exercise that, there sometimes are disputes as to what market value is, and yes, it could be contested. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if it were contested, there's a possibility we would not be able to procure the land or, or secure it uh, for public use. Um, can, I, can I ask a little bit about how we chose the property that we're trading? Mm -hmm. um, in discussions with the developer, Mitch Meyer, um, he was open to a swap if we found a property in the same area. The city of San Antonio looked at our inventory, and the only property in this area that you can build on is the Cherry Street lot that we've identified in this transaction. And the operations that were in there relocated in December of 2018, so the lot was available as well. Okay. And um, there's some language in here about the environmental uh, that needs to be done. What type of environmental work needs to be done on that property? I'm going to ask my real estate manager, Pete Alanis, to speak specifically to that issue. Thank you. Um, there is some environmental soil uh, work that needs to be done and remediated along with asbestos work um, within the building itself. And uh, I see we're appropriate, not, uh, we're putting aside $600,000 to do that and the, and the planning. How did, how much will the environmental work cost? I, I apologize. I think you asked this question already, right? Right. We're estimating between uh, two hundred fifty dollars and 300000 for that environmental work, uh, plus another two hundred fifty to 300000 for demolition and the survey and plat work. So if the environmental work were to cost more, would that, uh, what would happen in that case? Um, we've done a, an estimate with our TCI environmental team and with our external consultant 
to come up with that plan, and we're ready to engage that plan as soon as uh, the vote uh, moves forward. Okay. It was 260,000, right? Sure. The environmental was 360. We have a plan. Yes, we have an estimate. And our estimate came in at 260. And so if we were to go forward with that, we can start immediately, and that's 260000 And we feel comfortable with the $600,000 appropriation that will pay for the three items, which are the replatting, the environmental remediation, and the demolition of the existing structure. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you, uh, uh, Lori. Um, so I, I think I'm going to agree with Councilman uh, Saldana and uh, Councilman Hall and, and Councilman Trevino and say that this is an effort to uh, take us back to where we, we should have been, to leave the um, land in, in public use. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, the public participation principles are referenced in the, in the resolution. Um, I know that we're not there yet in terms of fully implementing uh, them uh, in every council decision, but I'm glad to see they're referenced. Um, I think they're a start. Um, I wrote that CCR with the four more recommendations and a supplemental memo, and I, uh, I am looking forward to us implementing all of those, uh, all of those actions. Um, but we also need to decide to which council actions they apply and I think it's clear from today's discussion that it's not just about the property at uh, North Cherry, but it's about how we convey property um, and how the, the public becomes aware of it and whether or not they have a voice in it. Um, you know, when I speak to the residents of District 7, none of them ask me about Hay Street Bridge, I have to be honest. Ex <laughs> I apologize. Except for, except for Mario Bravo. Nobody asks me about the, the, Hay Street, um, the Hay Street Bridge. But what they do ask me about is development in the city and how they can have a voice in uh, making sure they, they, they have a voice in shaping the future of the city. So I think what we do here does sort of set a standard for what we do in other parts of of, of the city. Um, and un I mean, the truth is, part of the reason we came up with that CCR was what was happening with the Hay Street Bridge, is it was so contentious, um, and it was such a break of trust, that all I could ask myself was, how can we try to avoid this situation ever happening again in the future. And the principles alone don't do it. It's gonna take a lot of work to rebuild that trust, but that is, that is an effort uh, to, to do that. Um, there was someone who, who came up earlier, Yanith, right, who uh, you told me this earlier about calling uh, Mr. Myers bluff, and I think somebody else uh, said it to, today. Um, I want to see this land become a park before we lose any more people. And, uh, you know, we've lost Mr. Stedman, and I don't know how long it would take us to get that land back if we didn't approve today's, uh, today's agreement. And that's, that's not a risk that I want to take um, if I have a chance to get it back now for, for the community. So I know the way this was carried out wasn't exactly perfect. Um, but in the end, I think we're, we're in, a, in a better place. And um, I have to tell you that the intentions of, of Councilman Hall, uh, if I can guess at what they were, were to correct this situation. Um, and our intentions are, or at least my intentions are, to, to make things better between us, the restoration group, and the broader community when it comes to building public trust. And I think this is a step in, in doing that. Um, so. Those are my comments, and thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Sandoval. Councilwoman Villagran. I'd like to thank Ms. Nettie for coming up here and your diligence, your commitment, and your fight for your community, but our entire city. Thank you for telling your story. Thank you, because that lives in the annals of our history. So I appreciate you, and I appreciate your fight and your vigor. I want to thank everyone who's been here, who's been engaged and involved and active in this endeavor here. And I will say to, I think specifically Eric right now, I'm, I'm there, this is a bittersweet moment specifically because of the sign shop. 
That is where my dad spent 20 years working for the city of San Antonio to so see that um, go. It's, I wish I could enshrine that forever, uh, but we know that um, change does come and change happens. So um, that's why it's a little bit uh, bittersweet here with all of this. Thank you, Council Member Hall, for your work, your diligence, and always for all of the work that he's done, he's always thinking of the other person first, always thinking of the other first on this. And I look forward to working with Councilwoman-elect Sullivan on this issue as we move forward to make sure it is truly embodying what um, all members of the community want to see. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Villagran. Uh, Councilman Perry. Thank you, sir. Um, just real quickly, I, you know, what a tangled web, right? Goes back for years. And um, trying to untangle a, a, a knot or a, a web like this is not easy. And uh, I just wanted to say, again, thanks to Councilman Hall for working this diligently to come up with a compromise. There, there are some things that bothered me about uh, today. I, I agree with Councilman Courage. Um, in his comments. And um, another comment that was made that um, one of the parties will never be happy. I, you know, that's confusing to me, especially when they've been brought in to try to uh, accommodate, appease, come up with consensus, that kind of thing, but to hear those kind of comments, that's disappointing to me. But hey, if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. Um, a lot of work's been put into this, and I thank the city staff uh, for doing that as well. Is, it, is this a perfect solution? I, I don't think we could get to a perfect solution, but I think people should recognize the hard work of multiple organizations that have gone into this to make, make a recommendation and bring it to council to, to vote on. You know, I, again, I, I think this is the the best of all worlds at this point in time. What happened in the past happened in the past. This is something trying to do to correct it. Is this the right time to do it? Could be, might not be, but this is where we're at today and this is what's been worked out. So I, I again, uh, in my position here, I agree with uh, Councilwoman Gonzalez that we all work to represent our own district and we should know what's best for our district, but there's a caveat on that, that we should be working together and know what's going on in the rest of the city and work together as a team. That's what we should be doing, not just representing our district, but representing the city of San Antonio as well. So with that, I'll, I'll support this motion and uh, we'll, we'll go from here. But uh, trying to untangle these knots and these webs is not an easy proposition. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman Perry, Councilman Hall. And no real uh, additional major comments, but I did want to say one additional thank you to Pete Alanis. Uh, he does a lot of our real estate transactions that council members, we really, you know, he, uh, don't see and it uh, uh, does a lot of behind the scenes work. So Pete, thank you for all your work on this, um, uh, on the appraisals and uh, everything real estate. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Hall. Um, I'll be supporting the motion today and I have some comments. I'll be brief, but hopefully to the point. I've sat up here on this dais for the last six years and I woke up today uh, hopeful that a very long and ugly chapter for the city's history will finally come to an end. I still remain hopeful about that. And I want to appreciate and thank uh, my outgoing colleague, uh, Councilman Saldana, for his uh, words. I think they ring true in every sense. And he described it as a moment of atonement. Um, and I agree with that. In fact, that's the reason why we're doing this in the first place, is that many people in our community have been saying the same things over and over and over again since we've been here, and yet we find ourselves in this place. Um, there are some things that can't be undone, 
and some things it can. And the two overarching questions about today are, what do we do first to overcome uh, an injustice in our community? And two, how do we make sure that that never happens again? Um, as I was preparing to come in today, I had a thought that was just searing across my mind all morning. And so I wrote it down, and it said that the arrogance of a bureaucracy lies not in people with bad intentions making bad decisions. It's of people with the best of intentions making no decision at all. Today, I'm glad to have a colleague who is leaving, Councilman Hall, who has decided to urge us to action in a way that we answer the first question very well. What are we doing to overcome an injustice? Today, you heard an amendment offered that make sure that as this land comes back to the public, it will be a park. It will be a park that recognizes the history, that does justice to the memory of those people who walked across, and that ensures that the next generation of San Antonians will understand that piece of land uh, remains a part of our history and our heritage and part of our future. So I'll be supportive uh, for that reason. The second question, though, how do we make sure that another Hay Street never happens again? We've talked a lot about public participation, and I heard very clearly the young lady who came up here, uh, Wanda, Wanda Perez, I think was her name, Ms. Toscano. She said that you guys should be listening to us. Um, your job is to listen to us. And she said, do your job. It's not enough just to be up here and listen, um, but people have to see action. And again, I'm, that's, uh, that's why I'm, I'm glad to have a city staff, a manager, colleagues who have uh, chosen to act today. But to how do we make sure that Hay Street Bridge uh, doesn't reverberate for another council term or another generation? Uh, and I've made very clear and, uh, to my colleagues and to our city manager that we will uh, henceforth learn from Hay Street Bridge and make sure that the people's land remains the people's property so long as they are calling the shots. So we have to make sure that we develop a process of public participation that ensures that any conveyance of public property comes with healthy, robust, and comprehensive public input. That's my commitment as your mayor, to make sure that we solidify that process. I think only when that happens will we do justice uh, for the entire two decades of Hay Street Bridge and the, and the controversy it's become. And it is uh, unfortunate that this bridge has become a symbol of why people's trust in government has waned in local government. But I hope as a result of this action and the subsequent actions of this council and the future council, we will finally show that that bridge can live as a memory of those people who fought hard to ensure that its government serves its people. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming out. Um, I also agree with Councilman Saldana. Uh, it is very important for those of you who are here speaking that you don't get satisfied you keep us true to the work that we ought to be doing. And there's an important role in that as we move forward uh, into the future. So with that, we do have a motion and a second for approval of item number 23, as amended by Councilman Hall. Please vote. Motion carries. OK. We're going to move now to uh, the remaining items on our agenda that were pulled for individual consideration. Um, I will note that Council has a budget session today that was previously scheduled for 1 o'clock. We will take that up uh, right around 2, a little after. Uh, so after we're done with this A session agenda, we're going to break for about 15 to 20 minutes and then move on to the budget session. But we'll move now to um, item number 28. Yes, sir. Item number 28 is approving the following ordinances related to the Linear Creek Wake Development Project. Funding for the acquisitions of these properties for the Linear Creek Ways Development Project is available in the Proposition 2 Parks Development and Expansion Venue Project Fund included in fiscal year 2019 through 2024 capital improvement program. Item A is the ordinance approving the acquisition through negotiation or condemnation 
of approximately 19.511 acres in NCB 18589, located along French Creek in District 7 for the Linear Creekway Pro Development Project, a 2015 Proposition 2 sales tax initiative funded project, property being in the city of San Antonio, Burr County, Texas, declaring the French Creek Greenway Project to be public project for public use, declaring public necessity for the acquisition of privately owned real property, and authorizing the city attorney and or his designee uh, to file imminent domain proceedings. The estimated fair market value of this land acquisition is $13,700. Item B is the ordinance approving the acquisition through negotiation or condemnation of approximately